and um, uh, the co-founder of the business Blissful Fortitude. Um, my story is that I, I was a stay-at-home mom. I had like a, a business that I ran out of my house. Um, I have eight daughters. Wow. They are uh, eight girls. Yes. And um, I, I was with my husband for 32 years when he died of a heart attack. Oh and so all of those babies are from him. And he, um, uh, my world just got flipped upside down. I was pretty much a stay-at-home mom. I homeschooled, you know, was there for the kids all the time. Um, and then, boom, like my life changed. Yeah. And... Uh, it's very interesting when you have challenges like that, when you, you have a shift and a trauma, just you find out who your real friends are and you find out just a lot about yourself. Yeah. And so I had to reinvent myself. Um, so I didn't know what to do. Uh, we had a celebration of life at a vineyard and that at that vineyard, at the celebration of life, my girlfriends were coming up to the owner saying, you should hire her. And so they saw a need to fill the space between Monday and Thursday with corporate events. Because in the vineyard, we have lots of weddings and things like that. So, um, so all of a sudden, here I am. I, you know, was, you know, a homeschooled mom. And, and, and now I'm a widow and I'm enthroned in the corporate world. I'm, I didn't know what to do. So um, I started just eating up every book and every podcast and every YouTube video that I could to try to build that self-confidence. And, and along with that, I started to try to shift my, my friendships in a different direction because, you know, it was a trauma trigger for me to be around some of the couple friends. I think a lot of people can relate to this in divorce. It's like, okay, you get them, I get them. Who's our friend now? And it wasn't so much that anybody abandoned me. I just just didn't feel comfortable with her. And so um, I started like actually asking, <laughs> I was like picking up on women. I'm like, are you single? Will you be my friend? You know? <laughs> and, and so started creating this wonderful, amazing, supportive group of women. And one woman in particular and I, Desiree Maya, she and I became really, really close. And we don't have anything in common. Like she, well, well, we have a, the same like minds, but uh, like mind, but we don't like, she's younger than I am. She has tattoos. Um, I'm more conservative about that. She's, um, you know, she doesn't have any kids. Uh, I have 100,000. And, you know, so there's just such a big difference between the two of us, but it was just so beautiful to create this strong relationship with women that is so powerful. I know, because I gave birth to eight of them, and they are a force to be reckoned with, for sure. But um, we wanted, we saw something special in our relationship and how we lifted up and built up each other up to where we want to create a movement of women that would do the same by giving them skills and also giving them resources. So, so um, uh, right now we have our podcast, we're starting to launch some events and then um, we'll be doing personal coaching and then also we'll be doing um, uh, some, some seminars and things like that to kind of, you know, help people to build that and then also continue to encourage them. Yeah, that's awesome. So how did you go from getting involved with uh, the staffing at the winery to what you're doing now? Was there something that happened in between where you kind of started your own business or is this it? So, um, you know, at the vineyard, um, having to do all of that, I started the self-development to yeah. be able to have the self-esteem, to be able to, you know, knock on Google's door to try to drag them out to, to Byron and and convince them that our place was the place to be. Um, when, when we started the business, uh, it just kind of evolved, really. I, I, we had no intentions of doing it at all. We, it, we started with a friendship, and then from the friendship, we 
would listen to podcasts and exchange them. And we would have these really wonderful conversations. And, we, and at the end of the conversations, we would say, we should have been recording this. That was really amazing how we just process that. And, and so, you know, Desiree said, we should start a podcast. Ha ha ha. We should start a podcast. Ha ha ha. So we went to the, so one day we were at the gym and uh, coming out of the gym, Desiree says, oh, I signed up for the Summit of Greatness. Lewis Howes has a podcast called The School of Greatness and he has a summit in Ohio. And so she said, I signed up for it. And I said, uh, you're not going without me. So we went and it was life changing. Literally every day, every hour since, we have not been the same. Um, that was just such a huge pivot for us to where we started, well, we'll start the podcast. And, we, and then we found about, out about a branding strategist and we got connected with a branding strategist. And then we got connected with a podcast manager. And then all of a sudden we were like, we could do way more than just, I think we're on something big. We, oh, yeah. we should be doing something more. Like all of a sudden, and when you're, when you're working on something that you're so passionate about, that like you don't even want to sleep, you forget that you eat when the last time you ate because you're having so much fun doing it, you know that you were born for it. And so, um, so that's how that evolved, kind of from, from you know, being there, just, it just kind of trickled in. We didn't, it wasn't just like, I think I'll start a business today, you know? Right. Well, yeah, like you feel like you have a duty, you know? And that's one thing that um, I feel. And, uh, and it's also, I think better that way, because there's so many businesses and startups and whatever, but you know, it's more about the money or it's more about, you know, like, um, my boyfriend, um, does a lot of executive coaching, um, not coaching actually, he, he actually does human analytics on people so that fortune 500 CEOs, when they hire different people, they can see exactly their personality profile, how their brain works, what they can and can't do their, their best skill set so they can help develop that skill set, or if it's even a good fit, you know, for them. But, you know, he's constantly working with these people and he's like, there's several, and I'm going to get them wrong. There's like five motivations between a CEO, why they normally start a business. And, and it has to do usually with greed, um, proving people wrong, um, trying to, they, they have, um, what is it? Uh, they have fear, uh, fear of something. And so that's like a security blanket. Um, and then there's a couple more that I can't remember, but basically it's selfish motivations as to why they're doing this versus there are some people out there that find that they have a purpose on this earth. And then because it's something that you love doing and you're passionate about, and then you get to intertwine it with your work, you know, everybody wins. So that's like the ultimate type of um, CEO that he um, likes to work with. So, oh, that's awesome. Um, so you obviously fit that prototype, which is great because what will happen is you're just going to do your thing. And then all the things that are needed will just attract themselves to you. Awesome. And it's not a forced situation. It's not, you know, there may be some failures and things that happen or whatever, but it, you know, you're going to make a difference in the world. There's that sound. Hey, <laughs> <laughs> I told her to quit for half an hour. <laughs> anyway, uh, so that's it. For everyone that's listening and watching. That's my assistant. Um, so my, my goal is to always have people doing things while I'm doing other things so we can grow together, you know? And uh, so she's working on some launches that we have going on right now. We have a, a meetup tomorrow night. And anyway, so she's doing the media stuff for it right now, but uh, and probably need some help, but Anyway, thank you for uh, being patient. That might happen another couple times. I'm trying to get the notifications to stop, but whatever. So it's imperfect. It's okay, I guess. Um, so I think I'm understanding that when, when you were kind of doing this self-development, I'm sure it's a daily practice and, and there's always, you're always growing. Um, was there any part in there where you kind of, uh, I don't know anything about that program that you guys went to, but um, is there anything that they covered that kind of, um, gave you that light bulb moment or that aha, like, uh, oh, this is my purpose or this is my why, this is my big why, anything like that? You know, I can't think of like the defining moment. Um, I, there was just such a special connection between Desiree and I, and we both felt it. And we both know that I think women need it. I think, you know, women are relationship oriented and, um, and I think that there's just so much power when they come together. Um, so, you know, I, I wouldn't say that there was like a defining, really defining moment. It really was just an evolution to where it was like, let's just do this right. 
Mm -hmm. So we did everything right. We were like, okay. And we we're both very teachable. Once we got a hold of the branding strategist, that changed everything. That was when it was like, you know, at first we were like, nah, at the end of they give you the free thing and they tell you, this is what we're going to go through. I'll give everything to you and you could do it yourself. And you go, okay, we could probably YouTube most of these things. We could probably figure this out. And they were thinking to ourselves, like you, like you're like, okay, let me just stay in my lane and do my thing good. So, and, and just, you know, have people that, that know how to do their thing in their lane really good. Come on board and let's just come together, you know, and, and, and then it was just like the, the branding strategist was really, she came out of, so for that function specifically, when we went, you know, the motivation was amazing, but really what happened was this woman that we met at the elevator, we were walking to the elevator and um, they had put something on Facebook ahead of time where they were like creating like a, hey, we're going to be there. Here's tips and things like that. And, you know, I'm starting a podcast. I have a podcast. Can we meet up? Blah, 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 blah. She was one of them that did that, but we actually got there and we were so overwhelmed that we never did meet up with her. But coincidentally, ha ha, she was three doors down from us, coming out of the hotel at the same time, going to the elevator. What a coincidence. And I looked at her and I, and I said, I think we talked. I think, I think we exchanged things. And, and then she said, oh, yeah. And so then that's when she, we started asking her questions. Well, how'd you do this? And how'd you do that? And then that, if, if I could say that that was a defining moment, it was probably in line walking in because we walked down the elevator together. We all had like the name badges on, you know, walking to the conference. So we knew she was in the same conference. And, um, and so, you know, we would kind of walked together and as we were talking, that kind of went to that. And then we started making an appointment with her branding strategist. And then her branding strategist laid this all out and said, I don't know if you realize what you guys got. Like, you have the personalities, you've got the, the experience, you've got the education. Like, you could really, instead of just doing this, you could do this. And like you said, once you realize that you're so passionate about something and it gets you so excited and, and, and you start to see people getting touched by it, you have an obligation. Like we don't, and we don't even think about the money. We're like, oh, you are going to pay for that at some point, you know, because right now we're just dumping, you know, into it, you know, time and energy and money and all of that. And we're like, whoa, someday like they'll they pay us for this. Oh, that'd be cool too, you know? <laughs> So have you guys gone from, because yeah, you know, growth sucks cash is what I like to say. So uh, I read a lot of books, three to four a month, I would say. And the one I just finished was Scaling Up by Gazelles. And that's one where, you know, you, you kind of get to these places where you're growing. And I constantly, my word for the year's team, uh, constantly get to a place you have a rock in your shoe and you get stuck. And then you're like, oh, and then you have to realize you lean on other people to grow and then you get stuck again. But it's always you get stuck whenever it's just you. You know what I mean? When you're doing everything yourself, so you have to lean on on that team. Uh, but yeah, it, that whole growth process does suck cash. Now, trying to, or not trying to, getting to the point where you're returning a profit, um, how have you guys been able to monetize your podcast? What strategies do you have? And are there challenges that you've come about getting that going? Or how's that going? Oh, yeah. I mean, well, um, I had a little nest egg. So, you know, we, you know, we invest in the equipment and things like that. Um, so right now, um, we, we, we did a launch and so we did a fundraiser at the vineyard and, um, you know, we weren't really focused on like driving that money home. My man, um, I'm seeing somebody right now and he's amazing at all of that. And, um, I should have implemented him to get up there to like pull, pull money out of everybody's pocket. But right now, um, we're still in investment phase and all of that is coming from us personally. Um, we have, a we have a sponsor or, you know, or the, the, uh, podcast but you know in the beginning when you're just launching I mean we literally just launched a week and two days ago so <laughs> so yeah yeah we have like over a thousand downloads already so we're wow. excited about that yeah yeah awesome congratulations thanks so one of the first questions I like to ask everybody that I have on my show is uh when you're starting a business uh, everyone kind of thinks that entrepreneurship is this like shiny penny and it's really cool and you make your own schedule and all this stuff, but it's really not like that. You do make your own schedule, but like you said, sometimes you're like, oh, uh, 
I just work seven days this week. I need to force myself to take time off or eat or whatever. Or for me, like a workout, that's why I'm working out between podcasts and doing another one after this. So I'm going to go back to the gym and then come back. You know what I mean? You, you have to take care of yourself. But um, that's my challenge is finding balance. So when you have been getting your business up and running, what have been some um, challenges that you've had and how have you overcome those? Um, you know, so far we're kind of like, this is really scary because, um, we're waiting for the challenges to come. Like they haven't been all that bad. I think part of that is because we both have the mindset that things don't happen to us. They happen for us. So maybe there has been challenges, but we're just kind of like, okay, well, there's going to be something awesome that comes out of that. Um, uh, and so I think that, you know, when, when you're dealing with a partner, we get along fabulously. Um, and I, you know, the biggest, you know, challenges that we have, and they've been really minor was like, um, I'm the creative one and she is the organized one. Right. So, um, when it came to the logo, she saw this logo and I was like, we can't that logo you know we can't that is like way too complex you know and so mm -hmm. you're the visionary and she's the integrator that's a perfect yes thing. yes there you go there you go my friend has his human analytics stuff that's that's the extreme partnership that you do want when you're vetting everybody when you're trying to build a team so sorry to interrupt oh, wow. nice <laughs> well yeah we tell we talk about one of us is right brain one of us is left brain so together we're a full brain we love it so you know every once in a while when we're crossing lanes and we have to cross lanes for typically I do the thing, she shows up, she does the thing, I show up. But every once in a while when we have to cross lanes, that's when it's like, okay, let's talk. So so um, the way that we've overcome those is um, I take emotion out of it, totally take emotion out of it, and go into it with, okay, I want this, she wants this, let's see how we can figure out something in between with the with the, um, you know, the challenge at hand, there being, you know, a resolution. Focus on resolution, take emotion out of it, emotion out of it, okay, well, all right. If, you, if this is the problem I have with that, if we could fix that problem, then we'll keep that model. And, and then in the end, with this particular thing, we ended up with the logo that, that you know, uh, uh, just going in a totally different direction. And she's like, aha, I get it. Okay, you were right. Yeah. I'm like, look at the one we were, you we were fighting for. Okay. <laughs> so it sounds like, you know, being open-minded, being flexible, um, and being being reasonable, I think is like my biggest word that I like to use. Even, even in like commercial real estate negotiations, you know, when um, I'm working with anyone, whether it's the broker or the seller or me or whatever, anyone in the transaction, I always use the word, you know, I only work with reasonable people and I try to obviously be reasonable myself. So meaning you're like, okay, I'm going to listen and listen and then jot down my notes and then put my objections down and then go back to them. And for example, um, basically being reasonable and flexible. And then, you know, if you have a question about something that they want to do, cause you're trying to kind of point out the weaknesses without calling it or labeling it anything, you're just like, so like you'll repeat what they said, like, so this is this. And then it, you say it in a questioning tone, mm -hmm. and they, they go back to themselves and they go, Oh, uh, like, cause they already see that weakness and then they'll try to like fix it. So you don't even have to point anything out or fight, fight or argue or anything. But, um, but anyway, just, um, and then if they don't see what you're seeing, then being reasonable and saying, well, here's the challenges I see. Uh, but it looks like you guys kind of have that figured out, which is, which is great. Yeah. Questions are key. Can Questions you, are key. Yeah, we, we talk about that a lot. Yeah. Um, you know, when to help them process it and come to their conclusion versus just forcing something on, on somebody. Yeah. There's can't see what, or hear or feel what you are in your head because they're in their head you know what I mean so mm -hmm. yeah yeah perfect well, you're saying that you can read this from that far away you can read what that says you know <laughs> well maybe not no. <laughs> yeah that, that was us with the logo yeah so so that's a big challenge that you know I think every team overcomes that's great that you guys have kind of figured out a way to um, like pump the brakes, have a communication. You don't want to, yeah. And to be able to communicate and, um, figure each other out and then move forward together, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, 
the other, one of the other two questions I'll ask uh, every, every guest on the podcast, uh, what do you feel like so far, or actually, what do you feel like in general has been um, a big challenge? Or, well, let's, let's phrase it another way. What has been your biggest lesson, period? Mm, okay. Here's my biggest lesson. I'm going to try not to cry. You know, when you choose a business like ours and you're putting yourself out there, I'm very vulnerable in what I talk about and where I come from to be able to help somebody. Like, I don't want anybody ever look at me like I am perfect um, and that I've arrived. I will, I will tell you all the faults and all the things. When you tell your story, it can be a, a betrayal of another's. So my biggest challenge is doing this without the support of my children. Um, for them, I'm, I'm a Christian woman and I raise them God fearing and loving the Lord and moving into this they struggle with it being that self-empowerment is like being self-righteous. I think, I don't even know. I'm just going to speculate. So, you know, just to be real with you, I mean, that has been the heartbreak for me. And I know that, that you know, you're going to have haters out there. Like we got, you know, we've got all five stars and then we get one, one star. And what are you focusing on? The one star. Who's the one star? Who did the one star? Why did they give us the one star? What is what? Why didn't they even write a review? Who's this hater? You know what I mean? You can't do that. So I would say the biggest challenge is going to just have to be like, I know who I am. I know what I'm doing until I don't, and then I'll stop, you know? <laughs> you know, and just I'm gonna go in faith. I I just I know that I have a purpose, I have a plan, I have a miss a mission. And you know, not everybody's going to be okay with that. Yeah. And I'm going to have to be okay with that. No. Yep. And no. so that, and it's, it's, it's heartbreaking because, you know, as a mom, you're like your kid's biggest cheerleader. It's like, honey, I'm so excited that you're going, you know, away to school with them. And this is so great. Oh, you've got it. Uh, you know, and then with me, it's like, mm, that really? <laughs> They don't fully understand. And I'm like, yeah. I just got to keep that vision. And I just, I speak out loud and I visualize that someday they're just going to be so proud of me. And knowing, you know, when coming from like my, my late husband, Jeff, when he died, he was not a perfect person, but he is today. <laughs> so I'm like, yeah, when I die, I'll be perfect. It'll be fine. <laughs> I could rephrase that. That's a conversation I was having with my dad on the phone last night. And I just met him three years ago. So I didn't, I was adopted and I didn't know him and long story, but this, this is not my podcast. So uh, this is your time. But uh, one thing I have to reiterate to myself every day and then to him, even in his older years, he's like, I can't believe like I cried over Christmas because there are certain things that as a person, I'm like, you have to tell yourself and realize that no one is going to take care of you, but you, you know? So in his life, He's a lot of friends that realize he's mechanically inclined and he's smart. And so he does favors for them, fixing their bikes and their engines and things like that. And then it ends up sucking his time dry. And so things that he's like, I used to enjoy now become a chore. Like camping is now a chore because I don't have enough time to enjoy it or mm -hmm. doing my laundry is a chore because now it's like, I don't have time to finish it or what taking care of myself. And so I'm like, you have to tell people no, and you have to take care of yourself. So it's the same situation. I think where basically you're just taking care of you right now. And eventually they're all probably different ages. Eventually they'll see, Hey, my mom was just taking care of herself, you know? And yeah, I mean, you got to put that oxygen mask on yourself before you put on your kids yeah. and they don't understand that. You know, I think there's a part of them that really wanted me to be in bed crying for days, mourning him. Yeah. And I was completely freaked out. He had nothing in line for us. He left me with such a mess. And I just went, all right, what do we need to do? Yeah. I, uh, you know what? I, I'm going to figure it out. I didn't, I didn't focus on the problem. 
I focused on the solution right. and just was like, all right, let's go. And, and I think sadly, I think that sometimes they really have a hard time with me having joy. Right. Cause there's and, and and I do. Process. I forget all the stages of grieving, but you've just gotten to a different stage faster than them. And that's, there's nothing wrong with that. Yeah. I flew through it. <laughs> Some of it might catch up to you. You don't know, but for now, this is what you need and that's fine. Um, so I think you're right to not just with your children or with people, but in business. I mean, I have people constantly that, you know, question what I do or that, you know, um, even my name, the apartment queen, you know, it's in commercial real estate. So I have a lot of men that are like, Hmm, this is the apartment queen, you know, like that. And I'm like, yeah, absolutely. I am. And the more I think that you get reactions like that, the better that you need to keep, or the more you need to keep doing what you're doing because it's different. It's challenging. It's requiring everybody, including yourself to grow. And the more, uh, the more challenge, I think the more growth that there is. So just keep doing what you're doing. <laughs> um, for all our listeners, same thing, you know, honestly, I find that again, uh, in proportion to the challenges that you face is the proportion of the growth that you make. And so if you really want to grow, it's, it's good to have challenges um, or, you know, for us, you know, big lessons. So um, the other question I've got that we always ask on the podcast is what is your biggest win? Oh, my oh gosh, my biggest win, like what in, in life or, or in, the, in the realm of the business, whatever you want to share. Mm, my biggest win is that grace falls fresh on me every day. Every day. That's my biggest win. No matter what I did yesterday, grace falls fresh on me today. It's a new day. And I think, I think that's my biggest overall win, and that would cover everything. Can you explain to me and to the listeners what for you grace means? Because we may have a different version of things, maybe even like tying it to a certain organized religion or what does it mean? Sure. sure. Well, specifically for me, you know, I'm, I'm forgiven and I know, uh, and I, I tie it personally. It's, it's really multifaceted, but, um, I, I tie it personally to, uh, my relationship with, with God, um, that he forgave me and, you know, and he will continue to forgive me over and over again. I continue to forgive myself, which is a huge thing because I think that when you don't forgive yourself, you can't move forward. That's not forgiving yourself for things keeps you in the past. Yeah. Um, and I, I just want to move. I don't want to go back. Yeah. Um, and, and, and grace in that, it's a new day. Like I just get so excited that every day is a new day. Like I woke up again, you know, so it would be, you know, my personal relationships that I'm forgiven for the being the wretch that I am and the dumb things that I've done, you know, <laughs> forgiving myself and not beating myself up. And then also just grace mean, meaning I can, I can just do better each day and I get another chance every day I wake up. Okay. That's a good way to put it. Cool. Cool. That's, that's awesome. So, um, we have a couple minutes left and um, thank you so much for being on here today and being patient with my really strange, um, mountain times DST I'm in Paso, Texas today, and I've never been here before. And so apparently it looks like I'm on mountain time. So I appreciate, um, you getting on here with me and, and, um, dealing with the time difference or whatnot, but, um, how, how can our listeners get a hold of you? And if you could ask our listeners of an act, so for example, what do you need? If you could ask our listeners for something that you need, what would you ask for? Okay. So we are, we are looking for uh, the woman that would love encouragement, um, wants help with self-confidence, wants help finding their joy, um, and wants help, help with finding their self-worth. Uh, the problem that I solve is hopelessness. I want to help people to have hope. Um, the problem that Desiree solves is fear. So anybody who's, you know, held back with fear in regards to confidence or, you know, other things, we, we want them to get in contact with us so that we can help them. And, and, and we'll figure out 
what way that would be. For some people, it could be one-on-one -on -one coaching. For some people, it would be listening to our podcast every day. For some people, it might be our, our video series. So, um, so that's what we want. We, we want uh, to be able to have women that are just open to coming together, to want to grow themselves and be a part of helping other people grow in a community after they, you know, get to the point to where they, you know, feel secure enough with themselves to be able to do that. Because I think that's pretty much what holds people back yeah. is that insecurity. So that would be our want. Um, and uh, to get a hold of us, you can listen to our podcast on um, iTunes, Stitcher, or Spotify. And that's Bliss Beyond Fear. And you can go to our website. Our business is Blissful Fortitude. So you can go to blissfulfortitude.com and get a hold of us there. Um, we also have a 1-800 number, 1-833-MY-BLISS. So if you want to call in and ask a question, we'd be happy to process that with you on one of our podcasts. Um, and so those are the three ways that you can get on. Or you can you know, you know, email us at uh, blissfulfortitude at gmail.com. Wow, that's amazing. I'm really glad that you explained kind of your, your want because I realized after listening to you that you guys are kind of like the first step in the process of kind of what I'm doing in business. So I help women to invest in real estate and to be able to make passive income so that they can have freedom of time to pursue their why, or if they don't know what their why is to figure it out, you know, because I feel like all of us deserve to have a purpose and to be able to live that every day, whether it's work, whether it's whatever it is, you know, and so when I've been able to get, uh, create passive cash flow for myself, I've been able to, like I said, have freedom of time or maybe just to rest or whatever it is that you want to do with your life. But the first starting point in all of it is the fear of starting and the fear of failure and just the mindset of realizing that, you know, for example, being a limited partner in a $30 million apartment complex is a lot easier to do than you think, you know, and a lot of people are like, oh, you know, what if this happens? What if that happens? And in any way, so yeah, the mindset and that little guy that's telling you, you can't do it. You got to squash that person first before you can move forward. So I would really love to, to work with you guys actually. So that's yeah. great. Yeah. Wonderful. Yeah. Well, we'd love to be able to serve you. Perfect. Well, thank you so much for hopping on today. Thank you for our listeners for listening today. And we'll be publishing for the first time this on YouTube as well as uh, on our, on our podcast. Uh, thank you guys again for tuning in and uh, we'll see you guys soon. Okay. Bye.